Hello and welcome to another episode of Infrastructure Matters. I'm your host, Stephen Dickens, and I'm joined today by Tim and Chad from BMC. Hey guys, welcome hey, to the show. How are you? Yeah, good. <laughs> Excellent. Good. good to chat to you. We're diving straight into it today. Mm-hmm. We're talking about operational resilience, kind of from a hybrid cloud perspective, which I right. think is going to be really interesting. So maybe get us away, Tim. Frame up what we're talking about and sort of give us some context for the listeners. Of sure. The so, um, An interesting development from the last couple of years is that cloud storage especially has really skyrocketed. And and when we say cloud storage, we mean object storage that's either on-premise, so regular storage arrays that have an object interface, or storage that's at a hyperscaler, like Mm -hmm. an AWS and Azure and so on and so forth. What's interesting is by tapping into that space, it really empowers the mainframe to be able to have a very scalable storage pool, very flexible, and it really opens up some really new vistas for that mainframe storage that they've never been able to experience before, and it tackles some of those thorny problems in data protection and resiliency that are, let's say, difficult to deal with with from a legacy perspective with tape and, and VTLs and so on. So can you elaborate and take us maybe that next level down, Chad? Sure, sure. How are people operationally deploying this object storage-based kind of approach to mainframe data? So the problem is when you store your data on the mainframe, it is potentially attackable, Mm -hmm. right? If that's a word, right? So if- We're gonna allow it. We're gonna gonna allow it, it. all right. So ransomware, cyber attacks are attacking your mainframe, it could take any any sort of uh, action, deleting data sets, encrypting data sets. So if we can store them out on this, out on the cloud in object storage, it is not on the mainframe. So even if they attack your mainframe and take down your your storage, it is separated. We call it immutable. It can be accessed either from a whole new system or from the system once we recover it. So that gives us flexibility. Mm-hmm. It gives us the security. It helps from an availability posture point of view. Starting to see some of those things come through with DORA regulations, right. particularly in Europe. Mm-hmm. Are you starting to see that factor into the conversation? So we're getting pulled in a lot out in EMEA, uh, a lot of the banks, mm-hmm. a lot of the insurance companies out there because they're pushed by DORA to say, what happens if your mainframe's attacked? What is your plan? And everyone has a plan, but do they take it to that level, right? So there's always those what if questions. What if someone does this? What if someone does that? Having that data separated out and backed up out on object storage where it is protected, it's encrypted, it gives you that capability to recover. And Tim, you're, I know you from chatting off camera, you spend a lot of time chatting to customers. What are some of those challenges as they try and deploy this model? As you mentioned, a right. couple of years, still relatively new. Mm-hmm. People are starting to think through. They see the re- the regulations come through. Right. They start to see, hey, if we can get this d- data up onto the public cloud, we may be able to connect it to an AI or a mo- mm-hmm. pu- more public cloud-based mm-hmm. service. It's not just right. um, from an uh, availability point of view. Mm-hmm. But what are some of those challenges? So that's where the things that we're doing and being able to provide the simple connection. Mm -hmm. If you look at other vendors in this space, a lot of times what they're doing is they're grafting on a single module to their already existing strategy. So, because they don't wanna lose what they already have built with that customer. What we're doing is saying, you know what, let's take a fresh sheet of paper. And what we've built is a started task that runs on the mainframe, that allows you to use zip engine MIPS as opposed to your regular MIPS. That's so non-billable, that's mm-hmm. nice. Suck all that data off and chunk it up and do it in parallel so when we send it to either the, you know cloud storage on premise or, or in the cloud, we can do it at a very high rate of speed and be able to move it there, but we don't make the customer change their methodology with their applications. We don't have to change JSTL. We don't have to change our mentality. So we've kind of cracked that code a little bit. Reducing friction and making it simple. We reduce the friction, we make it simple, we make it less complex to manage, having a simple web GUI that anybody who has a a, um, 
you know, a small amount of training can really be able to step in and say, I understand what I'm seeing here. I can tell whether something's been successful. It even has a simple capability of being able to simulate the backup. And so you can actually see what was getting backed up to make sure that you didn't just back up 300 terabytes of something that you didn't expect to get, that you'll, you're getting exactly what you expected. You can set up all your parameters. You can do it in minutes. I, I literally would say it would take somebody who's a reasonable technical person to, to create a backup environment. You know, I'm not saying everybody could, but I mean, anybody that, can, that understands a little bit about the, the environment would be able to create a backup policy in minutes. Okay. It's simple. I, I think the key is performance, yes. right? Everyone says, oh, you can't beat this or you can't beat that. It is scalable. So depending on what you're trying to back up and how fast you're trying to back up, we can scale. There's many different knobs that we can turn or put in processes to make it run faster. So that is key, I think, to the solution. I think the simplicity and the reduction of friction is key. Right. But how are organizations actually taking advantage of this and deploying it in their shops and what are they seeing? So with Amy Cloud Solution, there's really three legs of the solution. And one of them is the vault. That is the third copy that they're moving out to the cloud, wrapping it with an S3 wrapper. It's secure, it's encrypted out there. But there's two other parts. And one part that's uh, important is the Amy data. And that's where we're replacing some old legacy software that customers are utilizing that's slow, it's expensive, it's expensive to run. With the Amy Cloud, we can do it a lot faster, a lot cheaper, um, and uh, provide that cost savings, not only in, in VTL, but also in, in processing. Yep. And what are you seeing, Tim? And that, and that third leg, I think, is what's interesting about that is such a value driver for organizations because you can make all that investment in building a data protection strategy, a ransomware strategy, or whatever you want to call it, and do a great job with it. You know, traditional approaches work. Mm -hmm. There's a reason they've been around for 40, 50 years, because they work. But what it doesn't do is it, it's a, a little bit of a dead end when you think about what else can you do with that data. And that's what I think cloud opens up entirely new vistas with. Because when you put it into the cloud, now that data is sitting there at a spot that it's, we apply our third leg to that with analytics, and we can pull that data back out in a format that you can then apply in your data scientist um, place. 80% of a, a business's critical information lives on the mainframe. And it's always been a struggle. It's always been difficult to take advantage and really use that investment in the data scientist world. They have to build, I mean, entire companies have been built around ETL and being able to spend a lot of money to get that data out. But it costs a lot of MIPS. It costs a lot of money to do that. It's another system you got to put it back into your data protection strategy and everything else. It's really complex. The promise of what we do with Amy Cloud here with that third leg is the ability to take that investment and get another use out of it, which is great. And it's Especially simple. in the era of AI where people are looking to harness the yes. corpus of data and do something with it to drive the business and forward. And the data is closer to those applications. For sure. It's already moved there for one reason or another. Right. It's closer. Yeah. It's if available. you want to leverage the cutting edge generative AI technologies, they're going to live on the cloud typically. How right. do you get the data close to those services? Right. Yep. Well, guys, this has been a fantastic discussion. Thank you so much for joining Thanks. us. Thank Thanks you for having, having us, us, Steve. <laughs> You've been watching another episode of the Infrastructure Matters podcast. Please click and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks so much for watching.